Welcome back to our talk show. I'm Chad, and with me as always is Soto. Hey. On our last episode, we talked about five games that were influential to us. We had everything from Joust to Resident Evil. It was tough to win them down to five games, don't you think? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think I had a list of like about 25 games uh, that I had to kind of just go, oh, okay, what are the ones that I actually care about? So, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk forever on that subject and bored a lot of people. Not us, but bored a lot of people. But anyhow. <laughs> for, bored them for a long time, yes. <laughs> but during our prep work, when we were talking about our top five games, we both realized we had a same game on the list. And it was the game, after talking about it, we both realized it is the most influential game. Not one of them, but the most influential game. So we purposely left it off our last list. And that way we can do this whole episode on the one, the only, Final Fantasy VII. And awesome. to me, at that time, I was in college. I think I was, yeah, I was 19 years old. And I know in the last episode, I talked about Lunar Silver Star. And the only reason mm. that made the list was because I had to take Final Fantasy VII off. I only wanted one RPG. <laughs> but anyhow, so after beating that game, a friend's like, hey, have you heard of the Final Fantasy series? Now, I didn't have a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, so I never played the first three Final Fantasies. Well, technically one, four, and six, or whatever it might be. But yeah. again, I, I was never a role-playing game. So I'm like, all right, I will give this a shot. And... At that, it was the most epic game I have played up until that point. And I think, you know, just now that I was understanding how to play role-playing games a little bit more, because I've never done it before Lunar, I'm like, okay, what is this? And I still think that first playthrough, I can have done a lot. But I beat the first game, Final, excuse me, Final Fantasy VII, in 45 mm -hmm. hours. That was my end time. That tells you, and you know how much there is to that game. Wait, um, you beat the Final Fantasy VII in 45 hours? My first playthrough. I, I missed Holy a lot. Holy shit. But again, I was still learning... <laughs> I was still learning the role the play mentality. <laughs> nah, well, there's a speed run of eight hours, but anyhow. <laughs> oh, God. I got, you know, I didn't have that mentality yet. You know, the grind, mm -hmm. we talked about that with Lunar. I didn't understand it. But again, that was the most outside of maybe a sports game that I have ever played in a game. And it just opened my eye, you know, eyes to like open worlds, you know, flying, discovering, you know, grinding, stuff like that. Um, what did you think when you first put in Final Fantasy VII for the first time? Well, you know, and again, to, to kind of piggyback on what you're saying, it, it caught me in a time in my life where, you know, I had only really ever known things like, you know, that were like action-adventure games. Um, the concept of an RPG to me was completely and totally foreign and alien. Um, and I never thought to myself, okay, you know, there's, there's a turn-based aspect. You create a character. I had seen... Um, you know, friends, you know, playing Final Fantasy 1, and, and it was like four characters, and it looked very bland, and you take turns. And I had seen various RPGs growing up, but it never appealed to me, because, you know, for when I was when I was younger, all I cared about was graphics, and, and all I wanted to see was whatever had the best graphics that were coming up. And, you know, I just happened to be, uh, you know, in class one day, I think it was like an AP English class, and it was a friend of mine, and he had mentioned... Final Fantasy VII, he was talking about it, it showed me some artwork, and I was like, holy shit, this looks really cool. Um, I had always sort of kind of leaned towards, like, you know, an anime aesthetic, and when I saw some of the, you know, the the artwork, I was like, okay, that's awesome, but I had no idea how I was ever going to kind of gateway into RPGs, and so another friend of mine had recommended that I play um, a, a game called Shiny Force on Sega Genesis, um, he happened to have a couple copies from when he was younger, and so I played uh, Shiny Force a little bit, which was it's a turn-based strategy RPG, kind of like, you know, it, it, I guess the best way to describe it is like, you know, how Final Fantasy Tactics is, right, where it's like you have certain turns and you can move certain spaces and then Car you can yeah, do yeah, certain yeah. attacks, and you either have range attacks or you have melee attacks and etc. Um, and I love Shiny Force 1 and 2. I love the aspect of building experience. I, I love the aspect of kind of, you know, doing that whole thing. And, and that really kind of opened my eyes and, and got me ready for Final Fantasy 7. But I was not prepared for, I guess, the the cinematic experience that, that Final Fantasy 7 was, which was something I wasn't expecting or something I never really had in the game. I know I talked about Tomb Raider a little bit, and that kind of had, you know, the FMVs and everything like that too. But... Um, just the scope of the story and, and everything that was going on um, was just so epic, and I, I couldn't help but 
um, get completely engrossed into that whole universe almost immediately. Um, my sister and I, you know, we used to take turns actually reading the dialogue out loud. I know it's like before <laughs> there was fully voiced RPGs were so like spoiled now, but yeah, we would go back and forth reading the dialogue to each other because it was just so awesome. And I, and I'll be honest with you, I, and you know, we've talked about it before. I can't really even tell you most of the freaking story <laughs> that's in Final Fantasy seven. You know, I know the key points obviously that go on and, you know, I know all the all the main characters and everything like that, and we we named the characters whatever we wanted to, basically. And that um, was not to interrupt, but that was yeah, something I loved because you know, like I said, I played Lunar and it had animated cutscenes, but mm -hmm. there was something Final Fantasy VII took it to a whole new level. But to name yeah. your characters, I was like, what? Like to me, that was just again simplest thing. I was like, this is brilliant. So yes, I named Cloud Chad. Um, I think I named Barrett Bubba. I actually, I know I Bubba named Barrett was, Bubba. Bubba and... was mine too for Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> I know enough. We... It's so strange. I also, uh, you know, named, and this is the only one I remember because I don't know anyone else's, but Aerith, I named after my high school girlfriend at that time. So oh. in the Bronx, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, did I just kill my girlfriend? We'll get into that. But anyhow, to, you're right. To name the characters for me, because again, yeah. this is all the second. I'm like, this is awesome. It was a small way to put you in the game, even though I'm not carrying around a buster sword and doing like an Omni slash or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I thought that that was just so cool. I'm like, Hey, Chad's going on this adventure and stuff like that. But I agree, you know, just naming things were awesome to me. I mean, embarrassing admission for me for cloud. It, it, this was, you know, I had named cloud, uh, Anakin, which, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my mind at the time, you have to understand this is before the Phantom Meta. So I was yep. like, oh my God, Anakin Skywalker. I'm, I'm, I'm being so like, you know, this is such an inside cool thing and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And yeah, you know, it, it didn't really work out so well. well. We'll we'll have another like talk about the prequels at some point, I'm sure. But <laughs> uh, yeah, again, to your point, you know, it was great. At the time, I didn't really have a concept or understand, you know, how to do character creation or anything like that. So name me your characters, uh, Bubba or Anakin, or um, I, I called the dog Nanaki, because I think that he's called Nanaki in the game, um, as opposed to Red 13 or Red 14 or whatever. I can't remember. Is. Yeah, I don't remember his original name. Um, you know, I didn't play the vampire guy very much. Vincent, I think his name was or something. It was Vincent and... I did end up getting Yuffie and Vincent on my first playthrough. You know, I know they're both. Yeah, I got him too. You know, yeah. And I actually used the hell out of Vincent because if I remember correctly, really? his berserk ability, like he just had all those hit points. And again, I'm new and I just see this guy get stronger, more health points. And he's just fucking yeah. kicking ass. So I know once I got Vincent and learned about that limit ability, or I'm like, I have to use him. So I actually used him a lot. Wow. Um, and it was just, like I said, I would just get that rage, and he would just go crazy. And that's what I loved. Again, obviously, you don't control him, because when you're in rage mode, as you know, you're just slash, slash, hit, hit, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the damage yeah. he did, I'm like, yeah. I, Vincent was actually one of my favorite characters, or most used characters. I wouldn't, shouldn't say favorite. They're open in their own way. But, yeah, I used Vincent a lot the first playthrough. Yeah, I just I, I felt like he came in late in the game for me, and it's like you know once I already had my kind of characters established, um, I was kind of a little bit behind on the Vincent show. So, but um, yeah, it's just like discovering Yuffie. I mean, you run into her in the woods, and she steals your materia, and you have to answer those questions. And I was like, at first, I'm like, oh, did the bit the bitch just steal my materia? Like, where is she? Like, because you're <laughs> you're in the open world, and it was off. Because you instead of fighting obviously all the monsters, you just see this young girl there, and you're like. Where, where did she go? And then, you know, you fight monsters and maybe the next fight you see her again. And then you're like, yeah, I have to answer these questions correctly. So that's how I, you know, I figured out Yuffie. I'm like, I'm not leaving these woods until I get this bitch. Because I think I answered like the first <laughs> two or three wrong. So it's like once you answer it wrong, she runs with the materia and then you got to find her again and find her again. So, yeah, Jesus I, I think that was kind of cool, too, because, again, going back to I never played a game of this magnitude. You had two characters that technically you could beat the game without. And, and I kind of did, and you know, but you know, I could have, I could have built them up, and I think that one of the, the the biggest things that you know sort of influenced me about Final Fantasy VII and and the curse that Final Fantasy VII has given me really is the whole concept of grinding. <laughs> I never did grinding, like I never even understood the concept, but like Final Fantasy VII because of the story and because I was so kind of involved in everything, it it. 
it was the first time that I was actually addicted to a game where it's like I had to do something repeatedly over and over again to get better results. And I there there was never a game like that that ever did that. And so I spent, you know, you said 45 hours for yours. I think my first playthrough was I want to say either 98 or 102 hours. Um because I was grinding so much. I mean, Knights of the Round is a materia that you can only get in one place, and you have to raise chocobos to get, the to get it. Yeah, to get the golden chocobo, which in itself is this huge ass sure. fucking grind. Okay, and then you get there, then you get knights nice around. I gr- I grinded so much. I had knights nice around on my three characters that were playing. Okay, which means I had to multiply. Knights the round two more times, which you can only do that by equipping your materia and getting the experience points that makes it multiply. If I'm if I remember it correctly, yeah. Um, and um, I'll be honest with you, my first playthrough, I didn't get knights the round. Oh, I had to get again. It, it was the only way I could about, do the emerald weapon. <laughs> and I, I, I'll be honest. We'll get to the weapons. The one thing that I've never done in Final Fantasy VII was beat those weapons. I've never beat them. Well, you know what? 16-year-old me and 17-year-old me did it. I think you could do it based on I, your gaming history. <laughs> it's well, just a grind. I, I replayed it three times, but the first time after playing through it, I was working, and I beat it, and I remember talking to someone at work. He's like, oh, did you get the Knights of the you know, Round Table? I'm like, what is that? And again, because you said the grind, I didn't really grind too much. I kind of just went from point A to point B, you know, whatever monsters mm-hmm. came, outside of chasing Yuffie down. I'm like, I'm going to find this bitch. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, I did a little grinding, but honestly, I think I beat the game not only, you know, I said 45 hours around that, but I was only in my level 40s when I beat the game, too. So that tells you how quickly my first playthrough. Later playthroughs, I put in more hours and more time to do the nights and yeah. other things. But yeah, that first, because again, I didn't understand the grind. I'm like, I just want to get to the story. Let me get to the next part. And I was just so excited for that that I missed the grind um, the first time <laughs> around. I just heard, I don't know how I even heard it. I can't tell you. It's it's probably the same way that I heard that people were beating Resident Evil with a knife or whatever the the fuck I I used to hear about back then. But I had heard that you know people w- would that it was difficult to beat the Emerald Weapon and the Ruby Weapon, um, and that you know only a few players have done it. And so it's like a game of telephone. It's like oh my god, this thing that. And so before there was trophies or anything like that, I was like oh my god, I I have to. I have to see if I can beat this this part of the game that people say is really hard. And so, you know, the grind and why I can't remember the story right now is because it, it, it just became about the grind, right? And this is like kind of, you know, in playing these games that come out like Destiny Now where it's like you're just grinding to get loot. I was going against the same enemies over and over again and just looking at that experience and watching it grow because I had an, an end goal uh, in mind and that was to attempt – you know, beating the the weapons and and the first time that you know we encountered the emerald weapon, I had my buddy over, and you know we played, we tried over and over and over again to beat the emerald weapon uh, for at least twelve to thirteen hours uh, in a sleepover, Just over and over again. Couldn't beat it. Couldn't beat it. Couldn't beat it. Um, we went our separate ways. He went home. Um, and I stayed there and everything. We, we, I think we had a couple hours of sleep. I woke up. The first thing I did was I was like, I'm a, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try the ammo weapon one more time. And on my first try, I beat it. And <laughs> You just so didn't need your friend. You're like, I got to be alone to do this shit. <laughs> so I call him up. And I'll never forget this. I call him up. And... I'm like, dude, 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 I just beat the air weapon. He was like, so did I, man. <laughs> so, like, he went home. He did the same thing. Like, we had both done it for 13 hours straight. Couldn't beat it. Because we were so close. And it's, like, underwater. And there's, I swear to God, there's a time limit, that, like, where you have yes, to beat it, too. 20 minutes, I think. Um, right. And so you've got to cast Knights the Round. You've got to be on top of it. Like, you've got to, you've got to do everything the right way in order to beat it. And it is... Is time consuming, and you have to be able to just be like, okay, I failed, and then restart again, and and be good to go. And and so we both beat it separately, and it was such a freaking amazing feeling to grind something out like that. Nothing to do with the story. 
hundred percent just a personal achievement of being like, this is what I want to do in this game, and so this is how I'm going to do it. And so to me, that's what is the most important part of uh, it's the definition of a role playing game is that you are putting yourself into the situation and creating your own kind of set of rules and your own things that you know you're that you want to do and the things that you want to accomplish and play how you want to play and I've done this with other games like Fallout and everything you know Final Fantasy kind of led to everything from Persona 3 um to Xenogears Mass Effect friggin even Yakuza which I'm playing right now you know, you you get into a role playing experience and you make it your own. Yes, there is a story. You can follow a story if you want, but my most satisfying experiences have been when I've been able to do what I want, have personal satisfaction and, and accomplishment. Those are the games that stick with me the most. Uh, and it, it, yeah, and I don't really care about Aerith or anything like that or <laughs> Sephiroth or is, I don't even know about Genova or some <laughs> shit. I remember the music. The like, the battle music? Amazing. Of course yes. I remember. Like, the battle music... Fucking Final Fantasy XV, when I'm rolling around in my, in my fucking ride, <laughs> I'm listening to the fucking battle music for Final Fantasy VII. So I'm getting I, pumped, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, you mentioned the story, and you just mentioned Aerith's death, and I do remember that part, and it didn't affect me. Like, I heard, like, oh, Aerith's death, and again, at that time... I didn't play a lot of games like this, you know, great uh-huh. storytelling. It was kind of, like I said, maybe just a platform and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I see, you know, her death. And actually the scene right before this or that was the scene that might've got me a little bit more. Cause I don't know if you remember this, your cloud and you're handing, you're slowly going to her. You're ki- about to kill her. You're trying to stop yourself, but you're like, Oh my God, am I going to kill her? You know, you're, that was a little bit more heart wrenching for me. And then oh, yeah. you break out yeah. of it. Then Sephiroth, you know, the infamous knife through the chest. But, I didn't think she was going to be dead dead. <laughs> and I say yeah, that because right. I'm like, okay, they all had their heartbreak. I'm like, and you hear, you know, the whole thing about the live stream. I'm like, this bitch is coming back. And I think it took like a whole disc to realize I'm like, all right, I really think I lost Aerith. And then I'm like, motherfucker, I was spending time trying to, you know, level her up because, you know, this is, you had to play as the characters level up. It's not like some games where yeah. they all kind of level up no matter who you use. And I'm like, oh, I love that. I'm like, yes, it's, I love it too. But I'm like, I was, you know, she's gone. So it didn't hit yeah. me right away. It is, I get a big scene. The scene before that, like I said, when Cloud was just entranced about, to me, that kind of hit a little bit more because you're like, oh my God, you, you can't, because you have the controller and no matter what you hit, you're taking a step forward. You're trying to move back, but you're stepping forward regardless of what you press. Yeah. So I was right. like, I'm like, what do I do? You almost don't want to touch anything, but you know you have to. So I was like, oh God, how's this going <laughs> to end? And then obviously first you're like, oh yeah, the trance is broken. Then you're like, nope, Sephiroth um but an some, he was an asshole a good ass mm. well not a good a good villain let me rephrase that yeah. but again i was in college when this game came out in 97 i believe so it was hard for me to yeah. also put in the hours at first because i had a full-time yeah. job i was working 40 hours i was going to college so i was putting this in as much as i can and i think i was having finals one week it just coincided and i really for a week I couldn't play Final Fantasy, so I just did not have the time. You know, I was tired and stuff like that. And then when I turned it back on, this is the, my one gripe about role-playing games. Early on, I'm like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, where am I? Like, I got, you know, you said you forget the story. Oh my I was God. actually the part yeah. where you control Tifa, and you're looking for Cloud. Like, she escapes, you know, Cloud, you know, gets dropped, um, mm-hmm. whatever. Yep. But they don't tell you where to go. You're just searching. You go to each town, and then eventually you find them in a wheelchair in the back of a fucking hospital somewhere. But oh, I, yeah. remember, I remember I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? Because, again, I have Tifa. I'm like, I know I need to find Cloud. Where? And I was going to, like, city to city, you know, flying. And I'm, like, <laughs> going around. I'm like, give me a clue. And I, I think I spent the whole day just trying to figure it out because I forgot. And they don't tell you. I realize that now, but... That's what I was so frustrated with, and that's the one gripe I have. I'm like, there's no way for me to backtrack or remember the story because I'm like, there's yeah. no like, you know, books or something like that. I was just like, eventually I figured it out, but I was like, damn it, that that's the one thing that pissed me off so much. I'm like, where is this guy? Um, oh yeah, yeah, I, to, yeah. I, I don't even remember like any of the story stuff that that you bring up. And uh, to in my point of view, obviously I'm a high school kid. I got nothing but time. 
So that's why I could do stupid shit like fight one boss for 13 hours, you know, take a nap and then, you know, fight him again and have a job. I just went to high school. It's funny because recently I actually re- I wanted to rewatch the ending of Final Fantasy VII, just the ending cutscene and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, because I remember when I first played it or first beat it, I'm like, I was kind of a little underwhelmed. And I'm like, why was I underwhelmed? So I kind of rewatched it and analyzed it. And I, again, go back to the storytelling because I don't know how much you remember. You know, you beat Sephiroth and it's over. Yeah. But the meteor is still mm-hmm. coming. And you're like, is Midgar, they're basically saying, Mid- we're going to lose Midgar, but we got to save the planet. They don't know what to do. Yeah. The life stream comes, kills Mi- the meteor. And then you fast forward however many years later. Now, nowadays, we kind of know the timeline and a little bit more from that than children. Oh, yeah. but, but there was nothing there. And you see Red 13 with his kids. Yeah. And you see Midgar yes. under, like, all the forest. So you're like, wait, did Midgar get destroyed? You know, and that was it. And I'm like, oh, my God. Now I realize yeah. why I felt underwhelmed. Because at that time, again, not. It wasn't a happy, not that it wasn't a happy ending, but you didn't have all your characters celebrating like we did it, you know, we beat him. I I don't know how the remakes are going to handle all that, and we're not even going to get into that because uh, that's a whole nother. It's probably why I can't even remember it because I was probably just like, oh, whatever, like <laughs> on to the next. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but I, I always now that I think about it, you do remind me. I always kind of had this feeling of kind of whatever about Final Fantasy VII for a long time. Uh, you know, I think afterwards, because I was kind of like, you know, the, the last impression it gave me, I think, was probably along the lines of just being like, really? That was the end? But mm-hmm. to me, it opened up my eyes to how to do role-playing games better. And I think once 8 came out and I was playing that, I'm like, okay, let me do the grind. Let me just search every I, every corner of this map that I can before I go on with the story. You know, you're like, all right, can I get to this oh house? Can God. I get to this? Not just like... Again, the first time we played seven, it's like point A to point B because I just want to continue that story. But either way, it just opened my <laughs> eyes, and yeah, that's why it was so influential to me. Yeah, I, I agreed because again, that those bad habits that I even have now, where it's like I've got to go down the hallway where it looks like there's nothing there, but you know, if I know the main story is going to go down the hallway to the right, I got to go check the hallway to the left because maybe there's a secret treasure there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I, wasn't, I didn't have that mentality. Right. I didn't have that mentality before, you know, Final Fantasy VII. And it's like all the games I've played since then, you know, Dragon um, Age and, you know, Mass Effect and, and every RPG that I've played since then. Um, it's always like now it's like even open world stuff, which I find annoying. Sometimes I do want to play a game where it's like I just go A to B, but I can't help it. Like I have to do all the side shit first before I start doing main quest stuff. And that can kind of burn me out at this point in my life because I'm just like, ugh, I can't do this until I've done this side story, this side story, because then it's like, you know, if I go too far in the story, then that'll lock out this side quest. And I've got to, like, you know, make sure I get all... It's like eating your vegetables before you have your freaking meat. It's like, oh, my God. But again, you know, like we've been saying all, all the whole entire time, it, that started for me. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, it brought out who I am and probably who you were too. So, mm-hmm. anything else you want to add about the great Final Fantasy VII? Nothing uh, right now. I'm excited to play the remake. Um, you know, right now I've got to wrap up uh, Yakuza. It's been that's been a two three year project. I'm I'm just about to wrap up Yakuza Five. Um, but uh, you know, right now, you know, I'm kind of debating. Do I go into Yakuza 6, or do I do Final Fantasy 7? And, and, the, and the 60 frames per second upgrade um, that's free uh, for Final Fantasy 7 is... Um, I only played the first couple minutes, but wow, it, it looks absolutely insane. Uh, and I can't wait to play it. Um, I kind of have a vibe of what's going on with Final Fantasy 7 Remake as far as what their direction is, and I'm excited for it, uh, for the little bit that I've played. Um, I think I kind of have to get away from the whole hack slash thing and just kind of use my brain a little bit more. But because I talk <laughs> yeah. about Final Fantasy VII Remake, and you know, once I get uh, you know through that, I'll probably do the 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 DLC as well. Hopefully, it's gone down. Um, but uh, it looks gorgeous, and uh, you know, I can't wait to see what the sequels are going to be like. But yeah, once you're done the remake, maybe we'll have a discussion on remake versus original and stories and what we think. But yeah, we'll go from there. Anyhow, that was Final Fantasy VII, the most influential game in both our lives. 
thank you for staying, listening this long if you're still here. Until next time, I'm Chad, and with me is Soto. Hey, bye, guys. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. All right.